Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Man, I got a classic today. And this is actually the first song I ever learned on the guitar. Not really how it's actually played. Um, my brother who thought he knew how to play a guitar riff on my first Christmas morning, he taught me a one finger version of this, of this riff that... that uh, <laughs> worked for me on that first morning and it was my first ever thing I ever did on guitar so it's funny that now we're getting to the the real deal here but we're gonna do this great track from yes owner of a lonely heart uh, Trevor Rabin uh, just did some amazing stuff on this and you guys know the classic solo with the crazy effects we're gonna talk about we're gonna do that whole solo note for note talk about the effects um, I'm gonna be able to click on a lot of pedals down here during the lesson uh, so I hope you guys will follow along we're going to do the whole thing. Before I get into it though, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you know, ring the notification bell. Uh, what really helps the, the channel is to actually watch the videos that I release and like them and comment, but you know, watch the whole video. The longer you watch, the better. That means YouTube goes, hey, that's a good video. A lot of people are watching it for a while. Let's send it to other people. Um, and that's how this whole thing works. So please help me out in that regard. And if you really like what I do here on YouTube and you want to support it and, and maybe get something for it uh, on your own, join my online guitar school. It's the GL365 Academy. You're going to see a link to it in the description below. Um, that My academy contains all my guitar courses from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, and guitar tone. I go live there every weekend just with like kind of a question and answer sessions, just live chats with just academy members so you can get your questions answered in real time every week. So hope to see you guys there. Please click that link below and check it out. All right. Let's jump into the song. I'm in standard tuning here, and we have this intro which starts with this, you know, big, huge, thick um, guitar tone, um, and we have these power chords. But he plays them a little bit different um, in the intro than he does uh, throughout the rest of the song. So in the intro, he does a little bit like this. Oh, wrong thing. Here we go. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing the, it's still just the a, a power chord there. But I'm adding the fifth in the bass. So the open E string is in the bass there. It really thickens up the sound and makes it sound even bigger, like it's on a seven string or something. So it's, we add that, and then we do the same thing on the B. Uh, power chord. So typically that's just the B power chord off the second fret of the A string, that second fret of the A, fourth on the D, and fourth on the G. But we're going to add, once again, the fifth and the bass. So just let your finger go across to the second fret on the low E and play that as well. And then take that shape up to the C power chord, so like this. So the first three power chords there have the fifth in the bass. And then he jumps to the D power chord and it sounds like he removes the fifth. So we jump up to the D power chord here um, at the fifth fret on the A string. So we have this. Then we do that again. And then we're gonna finish it off the second time around. Uh, so just with this G power chord hit a couple times, uh, the third fret of the low E string. So we have this. And then you kind of do the riff again. Up, just up into that D and just hold it. And then it switches to playing kind of the straight riff. Um, I've got just a little bit different tone. It's got a little bit of chorus on it, but but he's not doing the fifth versions. He's not adding the fifth anymore. It's just straight power chords with uh, root um, um, the root note in the bass. So I just said that open A power chord, and then the B power chord, C at the third fret, and then up to fifth fret for the D power chord. So we have this. And then take it down to that G, that third fret of the low E string power chord. And then we do that again, but we don't do the G, we just let it, there's some little synth runs going on throughout. Uh, you can see that happening a lot in songs. So we have this riff that kind of really goes like this. Da, da, 
And then here it goes into the verse. So um, now that verse riff actually started, uh, is already going. It's, it started over the last time. You can hear it come in there uh, in the background, um, but you can, it's in the background. So you will probably wanna play that all the way to the G and then we go to the verse. Now this verse is a little bit tricky to play it like it's played on the recording. Um, Trevor Rabin, when I, I've seen a lot of videos when he's playing this live and he doesn't do it quite like it is on the recording. Um, he, he, he does a little bit, he kind of simplifies it, I guess, a little bit, um, which makes sense because it's, a, it's kind of a, a tricky thing that to, to pull off all the open strings and the doubled notes that are in there, you really need to be jumping around a lot. So either in the studio, he did a little overdub, um, and then he just play, and then he basically had two separate parts, um, or he just kind of, a, you know, kind of simplifies it live. What I'm trying to do with this part is play it so it'll match exactly what's on the recording, whether there's two guitars overdubbed there or whatever. Um, so the key to this is you're gonna need a little bit of a chorus on your tone and some delay as well too, because the delays make the notes kind of sound like they're ringing off longer uh, than they really are. Um, and this first, this verse here is really heavily palm muted. Um, so we do have a overdub in this verse too. There's a little, little double stop fill that happens in there. So I'll talk about that too in a second. So let me play the actual uh, main verse riff though first. So it basically does that eight times and, and halfway through there's that little overdub, um, but we'll talk about that in a second. So the actual riff, we're gonna start here, you're gonna be barring um, the fifth fret across the B, G, and the D strings. And in front of that, I want you to use your pinky to play the seventh fret there on the G. Because we have a little moving voice in there. This note jumps up to here the second time through the picking. So what we're gonna do is we'll first hold it the first way, which we have the open A string, fifth fret on the D, seventh on the G, and the fifth fret on the B. So you're gonna pick the open A string. Remember, this is pretty heavily palm muted, so it's, it's I'm not gonna, I want you to hear the notes a little bit better, so I'll kind of release the palm muting when we're, I'm just demonstrating it to you. So we have this. Then we're gonna pick the G string, and then the, uh, the uh, D string. Then we're gonna pick across from the B to the G, back to the D string, but when you get to that D string the second time, you want to now play the seventh fret there on that string, so we have this. We're gonna play something very similar to this out of the solo. Um, it's very similar to this riff, and he doesn't do that little move there. He holds the G. So if you're thinking, oh, I know this riff, and you're thinking of it, the, how, how it exits the solo, that's played differently than the actual verse. So this is the verse we're taking a look at. So after you get to that note, you're gonna go, you're gonna move that finger over to the seventh fret on the, on the A string and jump up and then shift up to the nine. And then here is where I see him usually simplify it, kind of like. He kind of goes. So when I see him play that live, it's generally how I see him do it, which sounds very, very close to the recording, and it might actually be what he's doing on the recording minus the overdub. But um, when you listen close to the recording, by the way, there's, a, there's isolated guitar tracks of this on YouTube, so it's a good thing to listen to that and actually hear what's going on without the vocals over it. 
When you get up to this note, we have two Ds. We have the open D string and the seventh fret there on the G played together. Then he picks the G string by itself again, and then comes back and plays at um, the uh, seventh fret there on the D. Uh, so we kind of uh, kind of jump back over. So then when you go down to that seventh fret on the D string, then you move the note on the A string up to the tenth fret. So then we have this. So this. And then we go back to this doubled. The open D with the open, uh, oh, with the seventh fret there on the G. Then back to the seven on the D, and then back to the open D and the, the seventh fret there on the G. So we keep having to do that little maneuver. Which, you, if you listen close to the, the isolated track, you can hear that open D string always coming in there like this. The, so when you do that final, you hit the open A string to kind of start it over. So the two Ds together, then you pick the top D, the, just the G string. And then play seven on the D and 10 on the A. So this. Uh, and then back to the two Ds. Pick the two Ds and then pick the G string by itself. Back to that seven on the D and then back to the two Ds. Real quick before you hit the open A to start it over. Like I said, he could be the, he could be just doing a, adding like a overdub of those open Ds that makes it have that effect. Um, because like I said, I don't see him do it live. I just see him do. When he gets here, he just plays a bar across the seventh fret of the D uh, and that A note. And he just kind of takes the top note twice. Sounds great too, especially when it's heavily palmated. But if you want it exactly like the recording, so it requires a lot of skipping around with that index finger. Um, but I think it sounds really good, especially when it's palmated, it makes it sound more percussive. So you can simplify it if you wish, or play it like the recording. Now, like I said, there's a fill in there. There was a little fill. So after four times of playing the riff, we have that goes on in there. That's an obvious overdub, overdub, and he doesn't do it live. But I'll show you what's going on. It's a double stop from the eighth fret on the D and the G. He picks that, quickly slides down to seven, and then you pick those two sevens again. And then the fives across the D and the G. So we have this. Then take the double stops over to the A and the D string. Pick those and then pick them one more time. And then hammer on seven on the A and the D. So if you wanted to throw that in the rib. Like I said, 
I sure most people probably don't even realize that riff is there. It's so low in the mix. And live, he just continues playing the, the arpeggiated uh, part and, and doesn't worry about that fill. So you probably want to do that as well. It sounds, uh, kind of keeps the song moving along better. All right, so then we get to the chorus. Now, let's talk about effects a little bit. So this chorus here has um, some delay, some chorus, um, and it has a um, like an octave effect on there. So we basically have this. So this, the production on this track is just, I think, when you listen to this in your car and there's like so much stuff going on, it must have been an absolute nightmare to mix this song. But the production is probably one of the greatest feats in music history. It, it sounds unbelievable how it goes in and out of these parts and everything is so well produced and um, mixed and engineered. It's just and performed. Everything is just amazing. Uh, but anyway. Enough of that. So this chorus is pretty simple though. All he's doing is he's playing the third fret on the B string and then the high E together. And then, like I said, he's got an octave effect on this. So it might sound like, sounds like he's doing some harmonics, but it's actually the octave effect that is doing that. So we have this, and then he just picks across, very simple, open high E, then you're still holding that third fret there on the B. So open high E, third fret on the B, to the open G, and then back to that note on the B string, and then back to the open G. And that's it, it's just this. And then the fourth time through, after you do these two, notes together we have a different that ends it and that's just now you're gonna just play the second fret there on the G string and you're gonna pick the open D and then that G string the second fret and then the open B now that one right there in the mix you can hear an octave pedal of that note that is being taken up two octaves and it sounds like you know harmonics but it's just <clears throat> it's just that effect of the, the, the harmonizer, really. So that's how you're going to see him, see, hear it on the recording, and that's how you're going to see him play it right after they record it. So right out in like 83, 84. Um, later on, you'll see him, he kind of just does a... So you'll hear him do the actual bass line that the bass player does. He does it on guitar. And then that same little arpeggio pick, uh, thing. So um, kind of do what you will with it. I like the kind of the, the really airy stuff. All right, and then we get back to the verse again. Now, the second verse through has that power chord riff going on with the clean guitar riff going, but generally the power chord riff is a little bit more dominant in the mix. And when he plays live, he's you know kind of developing the song. So the second verse is pretty much. <laughs> Like I said, they had the clean part that's going with this, but if you had a second guitar player, they could be doing that, but if you only have one, do this one. And then the fourth time, a little bit different. He basically does that G hit, the two hits on the G, the fourth time of playing it, Playing it through, he does that um, G hit both times around. He just kind of, so he's got, he does it to end it there. Um, and then we get back to the same chorus again, so the same thing that we already covered. Um, and then we get to the bridge section. So uh, this is when he's, uh, once again, he has a little bit 
when you see him play this live, it is slightly, very, very slightly different than what is on the recording. So the first time you hear this bridge section, when he's playing these chords, he, he's, he voices them differently than the second time you hear it later on in the song. Um, and then there's a modulation later on in the song too. So the first time you actually, when you see him play it live, you see him just play it one way, um, which is basically the way he plays it the second time through in the song. And um, that's where you, how you see him play it live. But on the recording, it's slightly different. So the first time you hear this riff, it's actually played like this on the recording. So we're basically doing um, this. So what he does, when you'll see him play this part live, he's doing this. And that is correct the second time they play it. But the first time you, you hear this on the actual studio version, he starts with the same chord, which is an A major chord. You see him when he's playing, he kind of does like this. But he's just kind of holding his hands different. He's really just focusing on these top strings. Really the top three mainly. So it, it's just gonna be a bar across the ninth fret of, on the, across from the high E to the G really. So you have that ninth fret on the high E, 10th fret there on the B, ninth fret on the G. And then if you want to hold more of the chord, which is not really heard, he's not really hitting those strings, but he is kind of holding those notes live just in case. And you can just fill out an A major chord, which is just um, the 11th fret there on the um, D and um, the 12th fret there on the A. He does have his thumb over when you see him play live, but he's not really playing that note anyway. All right, so however you want to play the chord, it's an A major chord there. And then it goes to a C major chord. And on the recording, the first time you hear this part, it jumps up, it just takes that same chord shape and moves it to the 12th fret. Because you hear this top note this in the voicing, and you don't get that in that voicing in the C major that he does later on. But like I said, when you see him play live, he doesn't go up here and do this chord for some reason. But we have this. In the recording, he's gonna jump up that same chord shape from the 9th to the 12th, and then take it down to the 7th which is a G major chord. So it is. And then we repeat. And then we just kind of, you can just hit an eight. There's nothing really there on the guitar. It's just the synth, this big synth hit. But you can just hold an A root if you want there. Um, which is just the, going into the, the solo there. So <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about a different way of playing this riff later, which is a little bit like he actually plays it live, um, but that doesn't happen until the end of the song. So, all right, so now let's get to the solo. So the, this is a classic solo that is just brilliant. And um, what Trevor Rabin does with this is he, he's got a pretty crazy sounding patch on there. Um, so what is on, what is going on with this sound? So you can kind of try to dial this in here. Well, you're gonna need a harmonizer, all right? So uh, besides a standard lead guitar tone with just like, just some gain and a little bit of delay and reverb, uh, you need a harmonizer. And what's happening is, is when he plays a note on the guitar, the harmonizer is harmonizing that note a fifth above it. It's also adding an octave lower note as well. So you hear this, this note is actually being played on the guitar, but you hear this with it now. So we, and you also hear the octave of the note that's being played. So that sounds like this. You can almost hear it's like taking it up an octave as well too, that high, that, the, the, the um, Harmonized pitch, that fifth, is like kind of being played in octaves too. So that's really the main effect, is a fifth above the note that you're hearing. 
And that is how he gets this really dramatic effect. So let me play through the actual solo for you with this effect on it. And then a lot of the thing when I'm actually gonna demonstrate the solo, I'll turn the effect off. That'll allow you to actually hear what's going on. Um, and then it just requires you, you know, turning the effect back on and it'll sound like the recording. All right, so here is this, here is the, the actual solo itself with the effect. <laughs> So that's fun. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're gonna start here. I'm gonna turn the effect off, all right? So we know what's going on with effect. It's getting harmonized um, a fifth above it, and I think that fifth is being a, a, an octave above that fifth as well. And then the note you're playing is also being harmonized an octave lower. All right, so, but without all that stuff, we basically had this. <laughs> So it's kind of the first phrase. So we're gonna start here at the 10th fret there on the B string and do a kind of bend and release, whole step bend and release. And then down to eight. And then we have this. So that slides into the seventh fret there on the D and then you're gonna roll over and grab the seventh fret across the G and the B. And then back down to seven on the D. And then the fifth fret across the G and the B. And then back down to the seven on the, on the D. And you slide down from there. So. And then we have a quick little hammer on from five to eight on the B string. So we have this. So with the effect. All right, now from there, we have this. <laughs> That's fun. All right, so we're gonna be at the 10th uh, fret on the high E string. Uh, a, a bend there, a whole step bend. Down to the eighth fret on uh, the high E. And then hammer back on the 10 with some vibrato. So we have this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go all the way up there. I don't know, it depends on whether you have a 22 fret guitar or a 21 fret guitar. I have a 21 fret, so I gotta really bend it pretty, pretty far. But you need to bend it up to a high E. Bend it up to what the pitch would be at a 24 fret. So uh, that's easier on a 22 fret guitar, but I'm bending up uh, a step and a half here because I'm bending from the 21st fret. But once you get to that high E note, you, you, you can keep picking it and then you're kind of adding some vibrato and slowly decreasing the pitch. Kind of that kind of effect. And with the thing. You got that. All right, so that was how <laughs> All right, from there we have this. All right, so some interesting uh, things going on there. So with this. So we have a hammer on from uh, the open G to the second fret. And then you're gonna play the fourth fret. And that's a half step bend, so you don't really, you don't hear you, him get into the bend, it's just automatically. Like, kind of bend happens pretty quickly. Then release the bend, and then play the second fret of the G. 
And then we're gonna jump back up here to the eighth fret. So that starts on the eighth fret on the high E string. You pick that eighth fret on the high E down to 10 on the B. Then you play eight on the B and then pick it again and the hammer back onto the 10. And then what you're gonna do is come back to the eighth fret, eighth fret on the high E string and just slightly bend it up. And then we have, which is just 10, eight on the high E string to 10 on the B to nine on the G. And then a really cool effect, we have the open G string, and then he comes down here. Um, if you have a locking trim system, you're out of luck here, but he's playing a Strat, so he can just hit the open G, come back here and grab the, the G string behind the nut, and then bend it down to pull it up in pitch, a whole step. So, so we have this. So with the uh, effect on it. I swear, this is more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Let me tell you, this is fun stuff. So we have this. So that, the rest of the solo actually is this. All right, so coming out of um, this, uh, where were we here? Uh, after, after the bend, you're gonna come up here. So that's gonna be the 14th fret on the D, then roll over to the 14th on the A, uh, or the A note, it's the 14th fret on the G string. And then back to 14 on the D, then play 12, 14 on the G. And then we're gonna do a series of bend and releases at the 12th fret on the G. So he's bending up to that A and then back down. Just like that. And then we had this final lick, this fast thing, which just sounds like chaos with this effect on it. So this lick starts with the bend at the uh, 20th fret there on the B string. And then we're gonna play 1720 on the B and the high E. So 1720 on the B and the high E. And then you're gonna play 19, hammer on 20, pull off to 19, pull off to 17. Then over to the 20th fret there on the B, you pick that note and do the same uh, kind of hammer pull lick that you did on the high E string, but on the B string. Then you play 1917 on the G. Then over to 19 on the D, roll back over to the 19 on the G, back to the 19 on the D, and end it with a bend at the, with your index finger, kind of pulling the string down at the 17th fret on the G string. With the effect. So there it is for that solo. That solo is killer. It's a lot of fun to play. And then one of the coolest parts of the song is when they leave that solo. And we got this clean guitar riff that comes in that just sounds perfect. It's like perfectly mixed. It just, it's a very, very cool sounding part. But it is, it is very similar to the, um, 
the, the verse, but it's got a slight variation to it. Um, and like I said, usually live, he kind of simplifies it again, but um, it looks like this. This is what's coming out of the, um, out of the solo, the little breakdown section. <laughs> So that note too, going into the chorus each time out of this, even that previous first riff, you kind of just hold on that A there on the D string. But the difference between this and the verse is one, this one isn't really palm muted. He's letting the note train. Like I said, you're gonna need a little delay on there that helps the notes feel like they're staying around longer. Even if you have to leave them, and they still like, they're, sounds like they're still ringing, the delay helps that. Um, and the second thing is it doesn't have that moving voice. So it doesn't have the, that thing going on. He keeps this note here on the fifth fret on the D for the opening arpeggio pattern. So that's the uh, main difference between that and the verse. Everything else is the same. So it's basically instead of that last note being here, it's, it's still back here on the G note. From there, we have this. This is the same. And then after you get here, where the same thing we did in the verse, then we had that double D. Then we have this again. We have an open D by itself. Then the, I'm gonna just do this as a bar. So I'm gonna have the open D. I'm gonna lower the, my index finger across the um, seventh part of the D and the uh, G. Then I'm gonna pick that D on the G string and then come and pick the A on the uh, D string, and then that goes to an open D. So, it, so there's no double notes there, so we have this. back to the same chorus as before. So it's very similar to the verse, but there's just, you know, obviously it's not palm muted. The notes get to ring out more. And um, we have a slight difference in the notes that we're playing and not as much doubling of those two Ds. It just happens well. So it's pretty tricky stuff. So, um, if you listen to the isolated recording and slow it down, you can kind of hear exactly what's going on there. And it's, it's pretty intricate um, to get it just like the recording. Um, and then we get to the final section of the song. Well, we get to the chorus, which we've already covered. But coming out of that chorus, um, we have this, um, this, that bridge section again. So that same uh, A major to C major to G major, that little... But remember before we did this same shape, you said the nine, 12, and, and seven. Now, when you get to the end of the song, he plays the same chorus, but slightly differently. And this, when you see him play live, is the way he does it both times in the song. So he doesn't really, I don't really see him jumping up and doing that higher voicing like it's on the recording. So he plays it like the same first chord. And then just takes it down to a C major here. It's the eighth fret across the B and the high E. Ninth fret on the G, and you can do the the, the tenth fret on the D, on the D. But he's really he's really kind of hanging out on the top three strings. So, and then the second, the third chord is the same as before. So. So you're gonna hear this the outro section, and then it modulates real quick. Um, and then it starts, and then it completely fades out. So coming to that, that modulation happens after that, um, so kind of halfway through the riff. 
right when we get to the C major, then we have, then we set up the modulation like this. So basically, so we set it up just with a, a D major trad real quick, across the seventh fret, across the D, G, and the B. And then an E major triad across the um, ninth fret, across the D, G, and the B. And that kind of leads us up here to this F. So it's just, if you have that bar there at the uh, ninth fret, just scoot it up to this 10th fret. And now, So we start with this F here, and then it's pretty much the same progression, just in a different key. So we're gonna go from this F to this voicing. We're gonna play the um, 10th fret on the D, 8th fret on the G, and 9th fret on the B. So keep that bar though, even though you just need one note for now. Because then we quickly go to this E flat major triad real quick. Just hit it once and then go back. So we have this. So, so just jump back up to that second chord. So you hit each one once and then, then back to the. So. So we have this, this A flat major chord. Then to the E flat, back to the A flat, and back to the F. And, um, and it fades out and it is done. So talk about a classic song and just so such a, a well done song. And I've avoided it for a long time just because of the, the crazy stuff that's going on just with the, the guitar tone and the solo and all that stuff. But I thought it was time to really kind of do a deep dive on it. So I'm glad I did because it was it's a really fun one to, to crack into. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.